Welcome to my tutorial series on built-in functions in Python. In this tutorial, I will cover next nine built-in functions. Let's start with isInstance function. isInstance is one of the simplest functions in Python. It takes an object and a class as arguments. If the object is an instance of that class, isInstance function returns boolean true. In my first example, I am checking if integer object 12 is an instance of class integer, which is true. In my next example, I am checking if integer object 12 is an instance of class string, which is false. Similarly, in my next example, I am checking if an empty list and a list with 5 elements is an instance of class list. You can also pass multiple classes as triple in each instance function. It is also possible to pass your own object and class as arguments. Each instance function also take care of inheritance. In this example, I have class B which inherits all the properties from class A. Now in main, I have created an instance of class B. Now when I call each instance function with object 1 as first argument and class A or class B as second argument, it returns boolean true. PayString function is only available in Python 2 and it is not possible to call this function directly. PayString function is only used to check if an object is an instance of either string or a Unicode class. PayString is parent class of both string and Unicode classes in Python 2. In my example, I am checking if string object hello is an instance of class string, which is true. But string hello is not an instance of Unicode class. Because both Unicode and string classes inherits from PayString class, so string hello is also an instance of PayString class. Similarly, in my next example, I am checking whether Unicode string hello is an instance of class PayString, Unicode or string. Now let's move to next functions. Bin function short for binary, which takes an integer number as an argument and converts into a binary string. In this example, I am passing integer 10 as an argument in my binary function. As you can see the output, the binary function has converted the integer 10 to a binary string. The oct function, short for octal, is very similar to binary function, but it returns an octal string. Similarly, hex function returns a hexadecimal string. The next function pool returns either boolean value true or false based on past argument. If there is no argument or argument equal to zero or known, which is an another data type in Python, pool function returns false. Any other values like integer 1 or 2 always return boolean true. In my short example, I have created a list named items. In my for loop, I am passing each element from my list items to bool function. As you can see the output, bool function returns either boolean true or false according to argument value. Now let's move to next function int, short for integer. Integer function takes a string or a number as an argument and converts it into integer number. If you call int function without any argument, int function returns zero. If you pass a floating point number as an argument, the int function truncates a decimal portion of the floating point number. If you pass any valid integer string, int function returns the integer value. Similarly, you can pass a number in scientific notation or a boolean value. If you pass a string which is not a valid integer value, int function returns a value error exception. The second argument of int function defines the base of first argument. It has default value of 10. Now if you set base to 2, then the first argument must be a binary number. The int function then converts the binary number to integer number with base 10. Similarly, you can also pass an hexadecimal number with base 16. Int function converts the hexadecimal number to integer number with base 10. If you set base equal to 0, Python will choose a suitable base value by its own. Now let's move to next function bytes, which is only available in Python 3. Bytes function converts object passed as an argument to byte subject. So what is a byte subject? A byte subject in Python 3 is actually a string object from Python 2, which consists of sequence of immutable bytes. Let's see some examples. If you call bytes function without any argument, it returns an empty byte subject. If you call bytes function with an integer as an argument, it returns same number of bytes as integer value with each byte set to zero. If you call bytes function with a string object, the second argument encoding is compulsory. Encoding argument defines how each byte in bytes object will be encoded. If you set encoding to latin1, then the output is different if you set encoding to utf8. 
This is only the case if you have known ASCII characters in your string, as shown in the example. For other possible values for encoding argument, please check the Python documentation. Now if you try to encode a byte subject with wrong encoding, because it is not possible to encode a string which contains known ASCII characters with ASCII encoding, you will get an encoding error. To avoid such errors, you can use the third argument errors. If you set the third argument errors to ignore, you will get no error, but you may get a wrong output. For other possible values for errors argument, please check the Python documentation. The next function byte array is very similar to bytes function, which we have seen in last slide. Byte array function converts the object passed as an argument to byte array object. As compared to bytes, byte array is sequence of mutable bytes from value between 0 and 255. Now if you call byte array function without any argument, it returns an empty byte array object. If you call byte array with an integer value as an argument, it returns the same number of bytes as integer value and each byte is equal to 0. As I mentioned before, in Python 3 string is no sequence of Unicode characters. So if you call byte array function with string as an argument, then coding argument is compulsory. Whereas when you call byte array function with a byte subject as an argument, no encoding argument is required. Because bytes array is a sequence of mutable bytes from range between 0 and 255, it is possible to change any byte in byte array object. In Python 2, string is sequence of bytes and not Unicode characters. So if you call byte array function with string as an argument in Python 2, no encoding argument is required. In case you have Unicode characters in your string, you must use Unicode string from Python 2 for correct encoding. I hope you have now basic understanding of all the functions we have covered in this tutorial. Thank you for watching and please subscribe my channel for future tutorials.